Hello everyone, you are watching Bible Study Resources and a Tip. I would like to share a tip and some resources with you that can help you in your Bible studies. I'm going to be mainly focusing on one resource which I use all of the time, but I'm also going to mention a number of others. General Bible Study I recommend an open source program known as Bible Time, which can be downloaded at crosswire.org. Bible Time doesn't cost anything to use. It works on Windows, Mac, and Linux, and it uses Sword modules. Sword modules are electronic books published for Sword programs, like Bible Time. Because there are so many Sword modules, which cost nothing to download and use, it makes Bible Time extremely useful. There are better programs out there than Bible Time, but Bible Time is probably the best you will find for free. Now, notice that I said sword modules are electronic books published for sword programs. There are other options other than Bible Time, uh, but in my opinion, Bible Time is the best uh, of the sword programs. And because of the amount of sword modules, uh, then Bi that makes Bible Time the best uh, free Bible study software as well. I use Bible time when I'm studying, not just reading the Bible. I use Bible time when I'm preparing a video. So, for example, uh, I've used Bible time um, around, I started around the time that I started making uh, my Bible study videos. That's when I found it and I started to really discover all of the uses of it. And so when I was preparing those videos, the Bible study videos, uh, then I was using Bible time. And when I'm talking to people on YouTube, so for example, if someone comments, says something about the Bible, um, I'm already on my computer, I will usually open up Bible time and look at uh, the topic that they're talking about for myself. Uh, and I use the tools on Bible time if, if necessary to uh, get a better view of what it's saying. If you ask me a Bible question, I'll probably use Bible time to get more information about the subject before I answer you. I've found Bible time in specific modules, the ASV, KJV, Strong's Hebrew, and Strong's Greek modules to be extremely helpful, so I encourage you to try them out as well. Now, there are a lot of modules. Um, I actually have more modules than what I've mentioned here, but uh, these are the ones that I've found to be the most helpful. The ASV, because that seems to be the one I usually read from uh, in my videos. The King James Version, because uh, the King James Version module is um, connected to Strong's Hebrew and Strong's Greek. It makes it very easy to look up um, a Hebrew word in Strong's Hebrew Dictionary and a Greek word in Strong's Greek Dictionary. If I ever uh, make a video showing you how to use Bible time, I will make a point to uh, show that in the video, how it works. It's, it's actually very, um, very helpful. Strong's Hebrew and Strong's Greek modules, uh, because obviously I use Strong's Greek dictionary uh, and Strong's Hebrew dictionary a lot in my videos. And as I said, the King James Version module is connected to Strong's Hebrew module and Strong's Greek module. And that connection makes it very useful. Secondary resource, ccel.org. Here you can read many Christian books which are in the public domain, like commentaries, dictionaries, and even some Greek resources like Grim Wilkes Dictionary and Sweet's Septuagint. We'll get back to this topic right after this. Dinoglus.com or go-dine.com is still growing. From there, you can read one of the 8 plus topical guide articles. As the name implies, each topical guide article covers a specific topic. You can get data oriented information in the form of equations and tables from the general research section. This section will continue to grow as I try to address different topics and issues.
you can create an account, post comments, and use the forums. You can, of course, look at the storefront to see what products are available for purchase. The storefront links to the products available at the Donagolis store. I invite you to come and take a look at the website for yourself. Hebrew and Greek. Here's my tip. If you really want to get into the Bible and understand it, consider learning Biblical Hebrew and Greek. If you do decide to learn, though, decide to learn Hebrew or Greek well. Don't half learn a language so that you're stuck between not knowing anything about the language and not knowing enough to really understand it. A lot of people, when they talk about learning Hebrew and Greek, they're interested in um, learning how to, they're interested in learning um, how to examine the language, but they're not really that interested in learning the language. So they could translate Hebrew into English, but they're not really that good at actually being able to read Hebrew, and they're, they would not be able to speak Hebrew. Now, um, myself, I am not very good at all at speaking Greek, but uh, the way that I was taught Greek, I believe that if I was put into an environment where I could use Greek often enough, I think I'd pick it up um, pretty quickly because it wouldn't be like I'm starting from scratch. I do know Greek words and I do. And that's what you want to go for. You want to go for fluency. You want to go for actually understanding the language as a language, not for uh, just breaking the language down so that you can translate it or breaking it down into like a mathematical uh, calculation. That's not what it, what you should be learning. You should be learning the language itself. Have you ever heard something like, a little bit of Greek is dangerous? You might respond, why would it be dangerous? Because knowing a little bit of Greek can mislead you and yet make you feel more confident in your ability to understand the Bible. Knowing a little bit of Greek and not proceeding with caution can be like trying to hold a sword backwards. So. If you know a little bit of Greek, of Greek or Hebrew or any language, and you become confident in your ability to understand things, but you don't really know enough to um, come to the right conclusions, then you can start to believe things that aren't true, and it can be very difficult or moderately difficult for people who do know the truth to convince you of the truth. And that's the problem. If you're going to learn Hebrew or Greek or even really mess with the languages that much at all, you need to uh, either learn it completely or um, get used to the idea that, yes, you might have stumbled upon something, but at the same time, you might just be misunderstanding it. You have to have kind of a cautious um, attitude if you don't fully understand Greek or Hebrew. Um, that way you're protecting yourself and anyone else you might teach um, from believing things that are false just because you made a uh, you you misunderstood what the text was saying. If you decide to learn Hebrew and or Greek, intend to learn them well and to read in that language, not just translate small portions of it. You might decide to look to simply look at Strong's Hebrew and and Greek dictionaries and to read from an interlinear Bible instead of learning Hebrew and Greek. This is useful but not as useful as actually understanding those languages. The warning above, a little bit of Greek is dangerous, applies here as well. I suggest that if you feel like you have enough reason to look at the Hebrew or Greek text, you seriously consider learning to read and understand them, though probably only one language at a time, giving yourself enough time to get acquainted with one before proceeding to the other. Greek Resources for those who are interested in or who know Biblical Greek, you might find these websites slash resources helpful as well. BiblicalGreek.org. There used to be classes you could take here. If you look through the website, you'll see suggested books and information about Greek. BiblicalLanguageCenter.com. 
For those who want to learn Hebrew or Greek from scratch, or who want to learn to speak authentically, this website has resources available for purchase. CodexSinaiticus.org Here you can read the Codex Sinaiticus by examining scans of the document. It's not considered to be a very reliable document as far as textual accuracy is concerned, but it is interesting reading an ancient artifact. So if you um, spot differences in the Codex Sinaiticus, which is in Greek, by the way, so if you don't understand Greek, um, you probably won't get much out of looking at it. Um, but if you spot some differences in the Codex Sinaiticus, don't jump to conclusions and assume that your Bible is wrong. It would be better to just trust what your Bible says, the King James Version, the ASV, uh, the ESV, the WEB. It'd be better to trust those versions than to trust the Codex Sinaiticus because um, it has been determined that it's not very accurate as far as what the original text said. Ask questions. If you have a question about the Bible, about Greek, or about something I've said in this video, feel free to ask. I've set up a forum on my website, go-dine.com, which is meant to be used to ask and answer questions like these. So about the Bible, about Greek, or about something I've said in a video, perhaps. If you prefer, you could instead email me at owner at or ask some of your questions on YouTube. All right, thank you for watching this, everybody. I hope that uh, you were able to get something out of this with the different resources that I mentioned. You should check those out. If you liked this video or found it useful, then why don't you subscribe to my channel and you could also consider clicking the like button. The like button will make YouTube rank this video a little bit higher in the search engine so that more people can find it and hopefully more people can learn from it as well.